Hi everyone, a very warm welcome back to Mech Tech. We're back out on the drive and we're giving Gizmo a little bit more attention today. Now, in the last video on Gizmo, you would have seen we spent a good long while, about 12 hours in fact, cleaning and polishing the bodywork back to its original shine. However, <laughs> it is um, lacking slightly on the maintenance side of things. I've looked up in the history of this car and the last time this thing had a full service by me, in fact, was seven years ago. So it is long overdue for a service. It's done about 17,000 miles since the last service. It's not done mega miles over the what it should have done. But time-wise, it is well overdue. So that is gonna to be today's job. We're gonna do a full major service on this. All the filters, fluids, spark plugs, the works. And then in the next video, we're probably gonna do a cam belt on it as well. So this video is gonna be a full service. So without further ado, let's crack on, get this up on the ramps and get started on getting this thing maintenance record up to date as such. Right, that's the uh, car up on the ramps as you can see there. And this is what we've got to go in the car. We've got all Bosch stuff apart from the spark plugs which are Denso. So we've got Denso spark plugs, Bosch oil filter, Bosch air filter, Bosch cabin filter and Bosch fuel filter and some Mobile Super 3000 oil to go in. So first things first, let's get underneath and get the oil drained out. Now I have just been driving the car so it is nice and hot so it, the oil will be nice and thin to drain out. So let's uh, get underneath and see what that looks like. Right, there we go, as you can see, that's our drain plug there, it is a 13mm nut. Now ideally you'd probably want to change this drain plug, but I haven't got one at the moment, so we're going to have to go with what we've got. Get that loose, and this is going to be hot, so I need to uh, make sure I don't burn myself in a minute. Get your bowl ready, this is, I say, this is hot because I've been at the engine running, so it's going to be pretty hot and pretty runny is obviously what you want because any sludge in the engine will come out with it there we go that is looking pretty black as you might expect you can see that on camera but there are no chunks in it which is good <laughs> there's no um milk shakiness or coolant or anything like that so that is absolutely superb um obviously because the car is on a slight slope means it is facing downwards slightly which means hopefully you'll get the majority of the oil out of the car in one go now the nice thing about this car is there's no silly um under shields on it which means it's really easy to do i literally drove the car up on the ramp as you saw and you can get straight underneath it and get straight to where you want to go so that is absolutely superb so we'll let that drain out for a minute um once that's finished draining whilst we're under here I'll probably do the oil filter as well. It's at the front here. I'll get the move the camera so you can see that in a second. It's very easy to get to on these, just the same as uh, obviously the uh, sump plug, really, because cars of this era they're just they're just brilliant. They're so easy to work on. They've got all the mod cons as such as far as what you really need, but they haven't got all the over technicalities, if you like. So anyway, I'm waffling. I'll come back to you once this is drained. And then we can move the bowl underneath where the oil filter is and change that as well. Rightio, with the oil now drained, we can turn our attention to the filter, which as you can see is right here. Um, make sure you obviously you put your drain plug back in before you do anything else, because then you've got no risk of it all ended up over the floor when you fill it back up. So this is a, a Ford filter on here by the looks of it that I put on. We're putting a Bosch one back on, which is absolutely fine. God, that is really tight. It's been on there a while. You can tell, because it won't go undone. God, that is ridiculously tight. God, I almost feels like I'm turning it the wrong way. I can't believe how tight that is. This could be interesting. I just feel like I need a breaker bar on it. It did move, but it's just obviously a little bit reluctant. There it goes. Come on. It's going. 
we've done this up did not do it up hand tight uh, i.e. me <laughs> there it goes cool didn't think that was going to come undone for a minute cool, that actually hurt my arm doing that god yeah right he will get a little bit of mess hopefully not on the driveway well it wouldn't be anything new so it won't make any difference but just to get the oil drain out of it a little bit can't believe how tight that was <laughs> Now what I did when I did the oil uh, drain, because it had not been obviously done for a long while, what I actually did was I left the drain plug out and actually poured a little bit of new oil that I had in the garage already through the engine to sort of drain out any sort of manky bits at the bottom. Not that there really were any, but I thought, well, the cleanest I can get it is the best it can be, isn't it really? So it did actually end up draining out um, clean. Which is good so hopefully we've got any gunk that was in the engine out and uh right let's uh i don't really want to get any brake cleaner in there so what i'll do is we'll get the new oil filter put that on and then we'll brake clean the side to get clean it up now as usual when you're putting a new oil filter on use a little bit of the old oil around the o-ring dip your finger in there and that'll be hot but wrap it around like that that's got a little bit of lubrication saves it makes it nice and uh, nicely seen I'll give it a quick wipe around that bit just so that it's cleanish again just to get most of the old oil out and then when you put this on you just want to do it as tight as you can by hand because they do have a tendency to tighten themselves up as you would have just seen me getting that old one off they do tighten themselves up over time from heat and whatever else oh, I can't get that any tighter so sometimes I do just just for peace of mind I know I shouldn't but I do just nip them with this only a little bit so that actually won't go any tighter even with that so that's fine that's, I don't want to damage the new filter so that'll be absolutely fine so now that's all on there and clean we can give this a little spray down get a brake cleaner just to uh, get rid of all the old oil that's drained down the side of the sump there just makes it look a little bit nicer if anyone looks under the car they can see it's been done as best as it can be as such you know a little wipe over that stuff dries very very fast it's obviously sold got a solvent in it. it dries really fast so get a little spray under here as well nice nice and clean and dry like we was never there look at that apart from the fact there's a brand new all all for us in there <laughs> okie doke right that is the two sort of jobs under the car for the service done now we need to go top side do the air filter and spark plugs and then we can uh, do the pollen filter and fuel filter so i'll come to go top side and i'll come back to you in a minute right under the bonnet now nice and clean as you can see from when i cleaned it the other day first thing we're going to do is take off this air box which is held on with two 10 mils one there. One little hose clamp here slides off this one just as a half sort of quarter turn twist that cut pops off and then this is on like little rubber bungs at the back so you just have to pull up on it and it'll pop off there we go you've got one pipe on the side there don't forget that it just pulls out and that's your air box off that then reveals your spark plugs which are obviously under these caps in here so pop one out 
and I need to grab my spark plug socket and we can get those out. I don't think these were changed that long ago um, for whatever reason. I've got to find a bill in there for just spark plugs, but um, we'll change them anyway. Just so that we know they're new. I mean, they're absolutely fine. You can see by the way that's running, it's running absolutely perfect. No carbon on it really, just a light brown colour, which is fine. So we've got NGKs in it at the moment. We're going to be changing them. I usually would fit NGKs again, but for whatever reason, they didn't have them in stock for this car. So we've got these Denso ones instead. Hopefully they'll be all right. They'll come with a, usually come with a cardboard sleeve. These ones come with a proper plastic sleeve on them. It's quite good to protect them, I guess, in case they get dropped. Just compare them to size. Yep, same size. And also I like to compare them end to end to make sure that the electrode is the same distance apart to the anode. I think that's the right terminology. And also make sure that the threads are the same length because obviously if it goes into the engine too far, then you'll end up with it crashing into things that it shouldn't be. <laughs> so they look fine. So let's get those fitted. It's basically gonna be a reverse of what I just did. Uh, I usually start them off always by hand. In fact, what I'm gonna do as well is I'm gonna put a little bit of three in one oil on the thread stops them sticking yeah just put a little bit of three in one oil on the on the thread and then a little bit and obviously that'll work its way around as you wind it in stops it getting uh, corroded in there in the future wind them in by hand and I'll use the manual ratchet on that just to so I've got a good feel of what tight tight because I don't want to go too mega tight just want enough to crush the uh, the crush washer, nip them up. Should be good. And that is your first spark. Can't talk spark plug done. So I'm going to carry on. Get the other four done exactly the same, and then we can move on to doing the air filter as we've already got the box off. Radio. with the spark plugs changed we can now turn our attention to the air filter now obviously this is your box it flips it over and underneath there are one two three four five six seven eight nine ten torque spits to undo and inside is the air filter so i'm going to buzz these off and then we'll get to the air filter eventually Right, there we go. With those ridiculous amount of Torx bolts undone, that should just lift off. And there is your air filter. Now we'll see, you might want to give this a little bit of a clean out while you've got it out. Yeah, it's got a bit of dust and dirt and debris in there. Not too bad, really. Um, put those screws up there so I don't lose them. Let's have a look at our air filter element. It's not horrendous. But it's not clean either, so it's good that we're doing it. I'm going to give this a quick um, blast out with some brake cleaner. Um, and then I'll come back to you. Right, with all that clean, this little hole here, you can see where my finger is, is where that pipe goes in the side. There should be a bit of foam in there, and there was a bit of foam in there, but when I touched it with a screwdriver, it literally turned to dust. And that is the filtration for the little oil breather pipe on the rocker cover so what I've done is I've got a piece of sponge cut it into a square and literally just push that in that hole so that it's got something for the oil to effectively absorb into and that should do the trick no problem at all so at least it's got something in there rather than just a load of mush so that's that bit sorted out we've got our nice new air filter here remember which way up it goes now so I just took it out I think it was that way uh, hang on, so look at the other side. 
can't remember which way it went. <laughs> I think it was that way. Must be that way. Does it fit in? Does it fit in there? Should look at my video, shouldn't I? I'm actually, I'm actually going to check back on my video and make sure I've put it up the right way. Stay there. Shouldn't have doubted myself. That is right. The only thing I'm slightly concerned about is there's a little like tab in there, which I suppose those you just have to slot those little fins around here. Yeah. I guess that actually just holds it in while she put the uh, lid on, you know. Yeah, it does, it does go in there, all right? Just a little bit of persuasion to hold that in. The reason I got confused is because I, when I took it off, this is the bit that I took off. The, this is the bottom, effectively, that this is sitting in. That flips over and sits on there like that. And then it's just a case of doing all those Torx bits back up. So I'll get that done and come back to you when we're on the next job. Right, that's all sorted. Now, before we go away from the engine bay and forget about it and accidentally start the engine, I'm going to put some oil in it because um, that's going to be a world of pain otherwise so we'll grab a funnel takes about four litres of oil. One of the thing, good, good thing to do is just pull your dipstick out um, before you start filling it because obviously it lets any air out because it has got a little seal on that so now we've gone for the mobile mobile super 3000 fully synthetic it's formula FE which is Ford economy approved so hopefully it will do this the world of good so I'll get this uh, glugged in not that much glugging in, or is it going to go everywhere? And I'll come back to you once it's full and we'll go on to doing, I think, probably do the fuel filter next. Right, it's now full. Let's just do just a little wipe on the dipstick and see where we're at. Look at that, spot on the level, and it's lovely and clean. Looks like my little trick with flushing a little bit of extra oil through the engine worked out lovely because that is still lovely and clean it's not got gunked up inside with anything so that's superb so that is our oil part done let's get underneath the car now now the fuel filter is actually at the back of these i believe so i want to get under the back of the car and i'll show you exactly where it is hopefully the clips come undone easy enough and it'll just be a case of unclipping one clipping the other one back in again right we are on the passenger side rear of the car that is your fuel filter just there this little canister here it's just clipped in on two clips either side into a little holder and it's got a quick release on both sides now what I'm going to do is soak those before I touch them in WD-40 because they do have a tendency to get stuck and I don't want obviously to have problems with getting them off and breaking things and all the rest of it so let's uh, I'll get those soaked down and I'll come back to you you, see the, you can see the little blue tab on that quick release you just have to squeeze one of those in on both sides and it should just pull off that is the plan <laughs> that's the theory anyway one each side so I'll come back to you when I've got a bit more progress on getting that out because I think it's going to take me a minute right I'll just show you what I've done I've dropped the handbrake cable out of the clips at the bottom and I've dropped this top pipe out that allows this to then unclip and it drops out so you can gain a lot better access to the clips you need to undo so in theory this is the first time i've tried this they should i've soaked them in wd they should squeeze together should be able to wiggle them off that's the plan anyway that's how it should work but they have been on here a little while so hopefully oh there it goes that wasn't too bad now obviously you're going to get a bit of fuel on the ground not much you can do about that i'm afraid so that's that one out and then we'll do the same with this one hopefully yep there we go that was easier than i thought um now when you take it off make sure you look at it and see which way the flow is well you know which way the flow is because it goes from the tank to the front of the car and obviously make sure that you get your new one 
put in exactly the same way. I'm just draining this into this cloth so it doesn't drain fuel everywhere more than I have to. It actually holds quite a lot of fuel. And this is a filter that often gets overlooked because it's under the back of the car. And also a lot of modern cars now, like newer than this one, don't actually have a, a, an inline fuel filter anymore. They seem to have done away with it on some of them. I mean, I'm talking from experience of my own cars. I'm not talking about every car, but... So we've got a, a Bosch one to go in. Looks exactly the same. Got little yellow caps on the end to obviously protect it. I'm just trying to see where the arrow is on this. I think the one I'm taking out is a genuine full one. Yeah, it is. Can't see an arrow on it anywhere. Right, so it's saying out on that side, and that's the way it came out. So that's got to go that way because obviously it's coming from the tank, going up the up towards the front of the car. So you just take your little yellow caps off the end; they just slide off. And these should just click on. Nice, satisfying click both sides. Get the angle right so it goes in properly. There you go, that's it, and that is as simple as that. So then you just click that back in this little little hole up there. It's got a little little clicker either side. Clip your bottom pipe back in to the middle there, like that. And click your handbrake cable. Now this one you've got to be a little bit careful with because these clips can be quite brittle because they're right at the bottom. And this is a metal cable. It should just slide in fairly easily. He says, famous last words. I think I might put it in there. There we go. So I put it in a bit too far that way because there's a plastic sheath at this end of it. It wasn't going the clip. Come on. Where are you going? There we go. That's it. And that is your fuel filter replaced. Now, obviously, the next thing you'll need to do is make sure you've got no leaks, which you shouldn't have. But obviously, just run the car up. Make sure you've got no leaks. If it's all good, then you know that you're all good to go. And the final job in the major service is going to be the pollen filter. So that, and that is inside the car. So that's why I've saved the interior job till last. I'll have a wash up my hands and uh, then we won't make anything dirty in there. And uh, obviously it will be absolutely marvellous. <laughs> right, we're in the passenger footwell. I'm pretty sure this is where they are on these. You've got one little clip at the back here, which has got a screw centre, but they never end up unscrewing, which is why I bought a pick with me, because you usually have to pop them out. So you pop the middle out, and then the outside should pop out as well. It's a bit fiddly, but you can get it done. Like that. There we go. And then this is on it, just two clips this end, so it just pulls out, like little slidey bits, like hinge, hinge bits. There we go. That one of them's broke. Need to sort that out. In fact, both of them are broke, so I definitely need to sort that out. And in here, you've got a panel at the back here, um, which is held in with two torques. So let me grab that. I think these are T20s. Yep, they are. And you've got two of those at the bottom there. And then this cover, it's got like a sort of hooky bit at the top, which you just pull out, see? In fact, it's supposed to have four screws in it, but it's only got two, because the top two are always a pain to get in and out. And then your cabin filter, or pollen filter, whichever you want to call it, just slides out. And already I can see this is full of gunk. Mm, look at that. Not ideal, all brown and manky at the bottom. But it's done its job, that's the main thing. Got a few bits falling out on the carpet here. So we've got a nice new one, which is a Bosch one again. Again, look at the top, make sure you get the airflow the right way. You want obviously the airflow coming in. And it's just a case of sliding that back in. In fact, on these, they're very easy. Compared to some cars. Slide that back in, like that. Put your cover back on, like that. Slightly like screws off by hand if you want. In fact, probably wind them in most of the way because they only go into plastic. Nip them up. I don't want to go mad because as I say, it's only going into plastic. And that is that. Job done. 
Now, I need to have a look at these because these little tangs, which are supposed to click in there, have broken off. So whilst we've got this apart, I might get the old hot stapler on it and uh, see if we can repair that. Because otherwise that'll be rattling around and it's really annoying, I hate that. Can't get this one out. There we go. So, you see that one's been glued before. You look at the back of this panel. Both of them have been glued before. So, yeah, a bit of a bit of a weak point there. I'm not sure what I'm going to do about that yet. Um, we'll have a go at maybe hot stapling it or melting it back together with a soldering iron or something like that. Um, problem is, because it's got all this extra glue on there now, it's going to make things a little bit more tricky. Um, so you've got to either try and get all that off or, or whatever, you know. I'll have a look at that and I'll come back to you. Right, yeah, I'll just show you what I've done on here. As you can see, they're both reattached. I've put three staples in each one and then gone over them all with a soldering iron to smooth it all in. They are nice and strong. But what I am going to do, just for a bit of double added protection, is put a bit of JB Weld around the bottom of them as well. Just to obviously give them a bit of extra strength. So I'm going to get that sort of uh, smeared around the bottom. It can go off while it's in the car. We can clip it back in and that should be Jobs are good and top banana. Right, there we go. Not particularly pretty, but hopefully it'll be nice and strong once that sets. And plus the staples and the uh, obviously hot welding with the soldering iron as well. That should be lovely and strong. So I want to get that clip back inside the car now. It just pushes in on these two clips and then you've got that one the other end which I showed you earlier. And that is job done. Lovely jubbly. Just thought I'd show you this before we end the video. <laughs> it's pretty manky, but it's uh, not got any contaminants or water in it. It's just old, so that's obviously a good sign. So there we go. Definitely needed doing that one, didn't it? Top banana. Right then, that is going to be it for this episode of Mech Tech. We have done a full work service on this, and that should keep it all good in good health for at least another year. Um, I'm probably going to be doing a cam belt on it at some point in the future, so that will be probably a future video. It's all running nice again now, I've had it running, made sure the oil level is still the, the right level. Obviously, with the fuel filter that I did, I did uh, prime the pump a few times just to get the fuel back up to the front again, obviously, because it would have had a little bit of air in the system, and it started up no problem at all. So that is absolutely superb. Something that usually gets forgotten is that fuel filter, because it is underneath at the back, and people either don't know it's there or they forget about it so that is something to bear in mind if you are doing your own servicing if you do like what you see projects like this the reliant van the puma the c1 the cab delorean capri fiesta mark ii they're all on there have a look at my back catalog there is over well over 100 videos on my channel now make sure you do four things for me like subscribe share and hit the notification bell it costs you nothing and it really, really helps the channel out, and I really, really do appreciate it. So if you could do that for me, that would be absolutely superb. Remember, I have got Instagram, mech underscore tech, 1985, and I have got Facebook, mech dash tech, for little sneak peeks during the week of what I'm up to. And all that's left for me to say is thank you very much for watching, and if you want to join me soon for more automotive adventures, I'll see you again next time. Cheers, guys.